to tilt. I'm really excited. Kelly's nervous. That makes me excited and also nervous, but excited mostly. Uh, before we go around and say hello to everyone, please take a moment to check out all of these links that are going to be spammed at you. I updated some of them so they actually make sense now. Uh, and um, also, uh, yeah, big thanks to our sponsors, Mage Ham Press and Bird in the Storm Publishing. Um, you can check out their links there as well. Um, I've also got some discount codes I need to add in. I haven't done that yet, but I will do that. I'm, 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 I'm coping. You know, I'm getting there. Um, I've also accidentally put an enter in that, so I'll fix that for next time. But hey, for now, it's good. Um, let's go around and say hello to everyone. Let's start with the wonderful. Hey, Kelly Lane. Oh, hi, Kelly. Hi, everybody. I'm Kelly. Hey, Kelly Lane on Twitter. You can find me here. Uh, you can find me on Wandering DM sometimes. I'm just, I'm just around. Um, anyway, and I'm running the show, technically. I don't know. I don't know who's, I don't know who's bossing who around. I don't know if my players are bossing me around, given their characters, or. <laughs> um, but uh, we're gonna go around and say hi to everybody and uh, have them introduce their characters really briefly, and then we'll get the show on the road. Uh, so I have to look over at Twitch to figure out the order that I'm doing things in. Uh, what's a break? Hey, uh, so yeah, I'm with a brick. I'm Ray. I play Ipsis, a tiefling arcane trickster rogue. Um, currently got stabbed in the back by Lancelite's dad, and we don't know how that happened or why it happened. So uh, I'm kind of excited to see if we get closer to figuring out that this week. Woo! And uh, Scrap, you want to introduce Lons for us? Sure thing. Lon's Delight, uh, aka Mom's Delight, aka Momlock. Um, she um, is a uh, fighting. Uh, she's a protection fighter, so you know the mom build. Um, and um, she uh, is, has fallen in love with this little droop, and she will protect. Um, but also has revealed to them that she might have a little bit of lockiness. Um, but, you know, uh, people in chat who were suspicious then got really sad because actually her backstory is tragic, so... Hi. And yeah, my dad stabs my friends. <laughs> and, and that's a good summary of what happened last week, too, while we're at it. <laughs> um, and Jess! <laughs> Still muted. <laughs> Yeah, uh, so that was me hitting the wrong keyboard shortcut to unmute myself <laughs> and almost crashing my computer. All is good. Hi, I'm Jess. I definitely know how technology works, uh, except not on Monday nights. Um, I am Little Cup of Joe everywhere on the interwebs on Twitch and Twitter. And here tonight, I'm playing Sandor, our token human. Ostensibly, he's a barbarian, but really, he's just kind of a, a wandering bum. <laughs> 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 what more is there to say? <laughs> I got nothing. And Vera. Hi, I'm Vera. You can find me at Vera Says Dragons just about everywhere on the internet. Um, and I play Ransom, our grumpy, moody cleric, uh, who is trying really hard not to care about all these guys, but he's not winning that fight. All is going to plan. <laughs> oh my god, it's like there's pre-planned character development. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and so I think I'm going to do kind of a brief recap of last week. Uh, so we found ourselves kind of climbing out of a lake soaking wet. We ended up back at midnight where there was quite the raucous bash going on. Uh, very quickly, we had uh, Sandor approached by an old flame of some sort, and that was an interesting experience, and where we dropped the bomb that we were, uh, you know, we ain't in Dawn anymore. Um, and then uh, we ran into Fletch, uh, who was from Dawn, but we met him here again in Dusk. And uh, Fletch told everyone about the festival that was going on and how you needed invitations. And he helped the squad get uh, some, get those invitations after they had a kind of a raucous night of uh, 
drinking. Lon's Delight uh, had a had some good times, um, including flirting with a local water Ganassi dancer. Um, after surviving that ordeal, <laughs> uh, we ended up at Fletch's place where we had some good fam bonding time, kind of fam dinner round two. Um, and we ended up waking up the next morning, doing some exploring and ending up at the festival where we attended the opening ceremonies, um, where we met Tristan, our kind of master of ceremonies here at the Festival of the Fallen Star, um, who did some pretty cool illusion magic, uh, including a dragon swooping over the crowd. And uh, I believe that's where we kind of left it. Um, all the while, we were running away from uh, or being concerned about Ipsis, who did get stabbed in the back, quite literally. Um, so, um, we are at this uh, festival. Tristan has disappeared in a, in a puff. Um, and everyone's just kind of milling around, standing around. And very quickly, however, after Tristan's disappearance, um, confetti, very large confetti begins to fall from the sky out of the middle of nowhere. Um, from a distance, it looks like confetti at first, but you realize it's, it's kind of fairly large pieces of paper, um, with writing on them. That says, uh, welcome to the festival of the fallen star. Schedule of events. Uh, at dark, Tristan, the great illusionist, performs. Shortly thereafter, Starfall begins. Have a wonderful time. Um, we all had kind of slept in and took our time getting out. So it's probably like late afternoon at this point. So there seems to be a few hours before kind of the next events. Uh, Previously, we had seen that there was kind of a marketplace set up. There was also a very large number of black and white, um, almost carnival style tents that were kind of sandwiched in open spaces in between buildings. They were all of different sizes. And a lot of the crowd seems to be moving back in that direction. And what would you all like to do? Thank you, Kentucky Hawkeye, who gives re-rolls to Ransom, Ipsis, and Lontholite. I mean, did we get invites last week? Uh, we got fake ones. Yeah, uh, yeah, we did. Right? <laughs> From Fletch. <laughs> so, Fletch has given us all the invites, so we can just enjoy the festivities, right? Well, we're already here. I don't see why we can try. I mean, if we have the fake invites, we might as well try and make them work. Maybe I'll see the water gonna see again. You yeah, probably maybe you will. can do better at flirting with her this time. Don't be mean, Sandor. <laughs> Just being honest. It's all right. You got to start somewhere. Most people start off bad. Skills take time to acquire. Yep. And so do we decide to kind of head back towards the main, or kind of back towards the, the tents through the marketplace? Is that what we're doing? I think so. Seems good to me. And as you head back through, you head back through kind of the market stall vendors. There's a lot of people just kind of selling trinkets and baubles and, and scarves and what looks like kind of um, costume jewelry almost. Just little things, nothing that particularly catches your eye. Um, you do see, again, those. there was two twins uh, playing with uh, kittens who were doing tricks um, kind of on the side of the path. Um, a, a lots of people are kind of stopping and ooing and aahing, staring at them as they're doing this. There's a small cat that does a backflip through a hoop. Um, you see them give the cat treats. Um, afterwards, 
you continue on and you see these tents again. They're black and white striped tents. And there seems to be people kind of going in and out of them. Um, each one appears to have like a label outside of the tent door. Some of them are very obvious. There's um, some that are like acrobatics tents and things like that. Um, others that talk about music or performance. Um, there's one where you can smell kind of food coming from it. Um, but a few others, uh, you notice the people coming out um, seem a little different. They seem to be very emotional. Um, there's one where, where people are coming out and they look just enthralled, um, just very happy and they're chittering away, talking about whatever they had seen. Um, another where people come out looking kind of reflective or melancholy, kind of sad. Um, there's a few where people are coming out just kind of shocked. And even one where you see a, a troop of, of, uh, of different uh, people, well armored, come out. Um, they look like they had just been in a fight almost and they're covered in dust or something like that. Um, and these tents seem to be drawing less attention, maybe more concern than some of the more traditional tents. Well, it certainly looks like people are doing something emotional over there. That's a way to put it. I'd bet money that one of them's a fortune teller. How you much? Go get your palm read. <laughs> no. Do you? No, I don't believe in that shit. <gasps> I'm unsurprised. <laughs> I am kind of curious as to what's going on, though. Everyone seems to be in drastic moods. No harm in looking. Perhaps Lead the way. They have some sort of speciality in evoking emotions. <laughs> right. <sighs> well, let's go. And is there any particular tent that you want to look at? Are you guys kind of looking at all of them? What are you thinking? Are we splitting up? <laughs> Lon's Delight would be attracted to the place where the people look sad. <laughs> <laughs> um, as you go up to this first tent that a couple people came out of, and, and you're noticing nobody's really going in here, um, you see this wooden sign on the front that's white with black lettering it looks kind of hand painted very ornate it's calligraphy um and it just says the hall of mirrors people are coming out of here sad surely enchanted mirrors i suppose yeah well with a name like the hall of mirrors it's probably showing them something they don't want to see but I mean, aren't Halls of Mirrors usually entertaining? Depends. Some people don't like to look in the mirror. It's true. That's very true. So have any of you been in... I was just gonna say, have any of you been into a Hall of Mirrors? Nah. No. I don't think I have actually, but I've heard of them. If this is curious. Does she is she like does she look curious? <laughs> she just keeps like looking at the people, like and then kind of back at the group, just like not quite understanding why people would feel that type of way coming out of there, I guess. She can't quite make the connection. You want to go inside? It, sh should we? I kind of don't want to feel that way. I'm, I'm worried about feeling that way after. Uh, yes. You're the one who keeps looking back there. No. 
let's let's not. It's probably better that we don't. Probably. Okay. I mean. Oh boy. You want to? No, it's fine. If you want to. I'm okay. I'll just quickly you... run round. I won't take two seconds. I'll just have a quick run and and see what there is to see. I mean, what? There's just mirrors, right? We hope. Do you right, want I'll to go, go alone? Oh, I'll be fine. Don't you worry. You you go and do something else. I'll meet you in a second and Lon's delight will run in. <laughs> well, that happened oh. fast. <laughs> okay. Um, and we'll follow Lon's Delight into the Hall of Mirrors. Um, the first thing you notice, uh, Scrat, is that this tent is most assuredly bigger on the inside. Um, from the outside, it looks like it's probably one kind of set of mirrors, but from the inside, it almost has that effect of looking like the hall goes on forever because of the back and forth reflections. So it's hard to tell exactly how big this space is. Ah, um, very clever, very clever. So far, amusement. This is nice. And you see maybe a couple other people kind of farther down the hall, um, each kind of staring at a mirror. And as you walk through, you begin to catch glimpses of yourself on either side. And it doesn't look, it's you, but it doesn't look like your reflection. But you know it's you. Hang on a minute, what do you mean it's me, but it doesn't look like my reflection? It's you, it's your features, It's but it's, it's not mirroring your movement. It's the reflection oh. isn't wearing the same clothing. It's... So it's me, but it's not copying me. I will look yes. at the different me's. <laughs> um, and as you stop and you pause to look at kind of straight on at one of the mirrors the reflection that you see is what Lon's Delight thinks of herself but only those bad feelings oh yeah it looks, um, oh, it looks so sad and overweight and ugly and clumsy looking and lonely. I don't know how you can look lonely, but it looks lonely. And maybe she's standing there by herself. You get this notifi- you get this notice that, like, Maybe some of the other people are standing next to each other, but you are in this tent alone. Um, the usual gleam that Lon's Delight naturally has is a dulled. And it doesn't even look does it... like the tequila sunrise like pink of her skin. Down. It's just like beige to like pallid, you know. Thank you for the host, Game Breakers. And how does Lon's Delight react to this? Is she moved? Is she frozen? Does she stay for a long time? I don't think Lon's Delight even notices because that's just what she sees when she looks in a mirror. And that's it. And you see yourself in this mirror and don't really get why everyone's so sad all in here. A woman farther down kind of breaks away very suddenly from her mirror and she's crying and she leaves. Um, another like teenager almost, someone younger walks away almost angry, kind of in a huff kind of raising their chin defiantly as they walk out the door. Lon's Delight will go to the next mirror. And it's just the same thing over and over again. It 
So like, are they all in different outfits or is there any change at all? They're just all the same? No, all the same. You do notice that it's, again, it's not like you're looking at yourself. The reflection maybe cocks its head when you don't. Maybe one even like turns around and leaves. Yeah. Like, I don't think she'll express anything really. She's just gonna think that she needs to go shopping for a new outfit or something. Maybe that will help. And you quickly realize that this tent isn't actually that big. Maybe seven or eight people could be in here at once, but you reach the far wall and the other mirror and you realize the optical illusion that's happening. Mm. And there's nothing really else to see in here. She's really disappointed that the mirrors were all the same. She was excited at first when she saw, I think when she first saw it and it wasn't wearing the same outfit as her, she was thinking that she might be able to like, you know, take some like style, you know, pros and cons from things. But now that they're all the same, she's just like, huh. She'll leave the other end. And as long as Delight is going through looking at all of the mirrors, what are the three of you doing outside of the tent? What else is in the vicinity, like immediate vicinity? Um, so there, there are a couple of these other tents that have people expressing some pretty strong emotions on the outside. There's another one that smells like food. Um, is there one where people come out feeling or like looking extremely like happy? Mm -hmm. There's one where people are coming out kind of smiling and chattering with each other and just that seems to be one of the busier tents. Do either of you want to go into that one? And I'll just like point off to it. It's the one where people are walking out crying. Nice. Okay. Sure. And I'm just I'm just gonna start walking towards that time. Follow. Follow. And Lons, you're able to come out and see kind of the backs of your group as they're walking away. Oh. Uh, I mean Yeah, I'll follow them. This was this was not a great attraction. Kind of boring. Don't really get it. <laughs> and you go in and Ipsis, you reach this other tent first and uh, the first, the sign reads, uh, Sense from Home. And I'll just kind of push past. And just dive straight in. And just dive straight in. I'm just going to go straight in. Rens Art hesitates. <sighs> oh. Sandor oh. goes after. At a Ransom, decidedly you'll... leisurely pace. <laughs> Ransom, as you hold back, Lon's Delight will catch up to you. Yeah. So the two of you are kind of standing outside of the tent together. And okay. again, this is the one that people people seem to be pouring out of it. There, it seems a lot busier than others, and, and everyone seems really kind of chatter, chittery and chattery. Hey. That hall of mirrors, I don't get it. It just shows you yourself. Doing weird things, but... How uninspired. Sorry that it wasn't better for you. That's okay. I would say my mood is stable. It hasn't really... 
you know. It's probably good. If you were unstable, we'd all be damned. That's cute of you to say. You're kind of like the one keeping us all together at this point. No, I'm just making sure you all behave yourselves. Same difference. Oh, good. You accept it. Good, good, good. I'm not sure about this one. Is this room or? This tent. Oh. Uh, and Lonsolo will also look at the tent and be like, oh, what can be so bad? I don't know. Come on. Yeah, just go in, but he's walking slow to make sure she's kind of with him. Okay, sure. And Ipsis. Ipsis, you see what's in this tent first. Um obviously, but everyone sees the same thing. Um, again, there's um, maybe six or seven other people in the tent kind of milling around and it looks like they're opening random things in the tent. Um, and what you see are just shelves and tables and piles of boxes and vials and envelopes and just all sorts of different sizes and colors and shapes of containers on every single surface piled on top of each other and each single one of them has a little tag a little white hand it looks almost handwritten tag on the outside and you see maybe one or two other people kind of running through uh ripping through reading all the tags um you see another person who's just staring at this ornate red box, kind of bringing it up to their face. What does the nearest tag to me say? The nearest tag to you is on a very large uh, bottle but it's almost like a vase it's giant and it's curved and made of blue glass and the tag on the outside says Maritza on it I'm just going to start not crazy like some people may be but just kind of like very distinctly looking for a tag that says my name And you find um, this very small black container, but as you hold it up and you pick it up, it kind of sparkles in the light, almost like there's uh, glitter or other colors of glass melted in with the black. A very small vial, and it has your name on the the name tag it just says Ipsis. Can I open it and smell whatever is inside? What is Ipsis fondest smell from home? It would probably be the smell of like burnt ash which sounds weird, but um, she grew up mostly underground and fire was the only source of light. And for her, it, it was very lively. It reminded her so much of, of fun and having a, just enjoyment out of your life, the way that it danced and flickered and um, eventually when she started learning magic and the smell of like charred wood, I guess, would probably be something that she's extremely fond of. And that is the smell that you have. And it is potent and powerful and it doesn't smell generic. It doesn't smell like any charred ash or any charred fire. It is has those metallic tings that you find in a cave underground or in space underground with the earth kind of right next to you. It smells like 
um, the people that were around you. It smells like, like mantra. It smells like the, 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 uh, just the scent of her person mixed with the smell of the smoke and the ash. And it's strong enough that it actually brings some of these memories to the forefront. Ipsis is going to smile extremely wide and close her eyes and there's a couple tears that kind of fall and she just holds it close and kind of hesitates for a second, but she puts it back and she'll turn around to see where everybody in the party is. Sandor is basically leaning and she probably nearly crashes into his face. <laughs> oh, something uh, nice? Yeah, actually, um, it smells like home. What? I, I, I don't know how to explain it. It just, it smells like I was back at home forever ago when I was a little kid doing goodness knows what but huh. it just smelt like home it was really nice you should try and find your stuff. you should try and find your vial or whatever you have here I'd be shocked if it wasn't a flask maybe it is <laughs> I got one of those thanks <sighs> doesn't hurt to try let me see yours and I'll turn around, pick it back up off the shelf, and hand it over. He'll take it and give it a whiff. And it, it smells like ash and fire and smoke to you, but it doesn't... It smells just kind of like ash and fire and smoke. Mm -hmm. Did a lot of camping? I guess you could say that. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, well, I guess if it has meaning to you. And he'll put it back carefully. Does it look like people are taking them or leaving them? Um, it looks like people are leaving them. But ever, you may even see someone nearby kind of look at it and like they can't decide. Since it's a small vial, Ipsis is going to try and pocket it while no one's looking. Make that sleight of hand. Sandor is making a point of not looking. <laughs> <laughs> not to get pocket it. Okay, cool. And uh, I'll just uh, stroll past Sandor over to where over Lon's <laughs> Delight and Vera are, or Ransom. Yeah, Sandor will browse around a little bit in the area, but um, he, other than picking up one or two and glancing at the tags with not a lot of interest, uh, he moves on to follow afterwards. Yeah, and so so like you pick up a couple of of random things, and they just they have random names on them, things that you don't recognize, um, unless you 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 feel like if you had were to take Kaika full inventory and look purposefully, you might be able to find your own, but mm -hmm. kind of a random search is not gonna kind of yeah. bring it to you. He will follow the others. Um, and so you're all kind of standing in this tent full of vials you uh, you both should try and find yours. I highly recommend it. So we're gonna hang out in the perfume tent for a while? Is that what I'm hearing? Oh, a perfume tent? That sounds nice. If you find a tag with your name on it, it'll probably spark something. Uh, I found mine. Ransom will look. And are you looking purposefully for yours? 
Yeah. And and you find uh, yours is not a vial. It is kind of a a black box. Um, it looks like not really black, but like a dark wood. Um, very simple but clean on the outside. Very sharp edges. Very kind of perfect in its shape and in its make. Mm-hmm. Um, with a small latch that looks like it's made of a fairly fine metal on the front. He is kind of hesitant while he's holding it. And he, he looks a bit conflicted. But he's gonna open it. And Ransom has someone in his life that is very, very important to him. And this box smells like that person. He smells the metal and the the smell of heat from a forge. And he smells the bite of the sea because it was always by the sea. And he kind of kind of looks like he got punched, honestly. Like, his face, he looks a little bit stunned. And he just takes a very long, deep inhale and then closes it and sets it down and backs up very quickly back to the group. His tail is kind of lashing. As you... Okay. As you take in this breath, you have these moments of not just knowing exactly where the smell is coming from, but also feeling that presence almost in the room. And it's comforting and it feels good. And you would, you know, logically Ransom that you should feel kind of sad. Um, That this is painful in some ways for you, but it feels so real. Uh, and yet you still manage to put the box down and walk away. Yeah, he has to. Um, he backs up to the group very quickly, and his tail is lashing a mile a second. You all right? I probably shouldn't have done that. You found your box? Yeah, I did. It's the, the dark one there. It, uh... It looks really pretty. It does. Are you uh, okay? I probably shouldn't have done that. (laughs) Okay. Uh, Sometimes nostalgia hurts. Huh. That's fair. I don't think I'll go and sniff my box. Yeah, same. I've got no interest in remembering whatever the hell these things make you remember. Well then, off to another tent then? Yeah, let's hit another spot. And you're able to leave and you you put the, the tent of vials and boxes and smells behind you. How are we feeling as we exit this tent? Having a good idea of exactly what's inside. Sandor couldn't leave that tent fast enough. <laughs> On's the lights feeling a little lethargic. Uh, Ransom both does and does not regret opening his box because it was wonderful to feel that, but also it hurts. Ipsis feels rejuvenated. (laughs) She feels ready to go, like... I think the fact that she got to pocket it real quick uh, really helped her, because in a way, I don't think she could have left it there alone. She had to take that. 
And I think because she she has it now, she feels a little bit more more pep in her step. Thank you very much to Snow Dogs for the subscription. You have a reroll to gift to a player or DM of your choice. Um, and so you exit, and again, you have there's a couple of tents that look very traditional, different kinds of performers, different acts. Um, people seem to be kind of coming out, just kind of cheery. Um, the two more emotional tents that remain uh, seem to be the, the one one where people are kind of coming out in silent like awe almost, um, and another um, where people are coming out looking kind of beat up. Shall we go to the beat up tent that uh, can uh, perhaps there is fighting in there? Not just Sandal, yeah? <laughs> Listen, if there's money to be won in there for a fight, I'll do it. That's kind of what I'm hoping. Okay. I'll Every... head that way. Every you guys coming? Yes, indeed I am. Every roll goes to Kelly. Ooh. Drop my lid. Ha! <laughs> <laughs> um, just kind of nod and follow. Okay, so as you as you um, walk up to this next tent, roll a perception check for me. Uh, probably just Sandor and Lawn's Delight, since you are kind of leading the charge of interest here. <laughs> <laughs> Sandor doesn't notice shit. <laughs> You are focused. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Focused on nothing. <laughs> We're so good. And there are beat up people coming out of this tent. <laughs> yep. <laughs> what other obvious things do we notice? <laughs> As you get right up on top of the tent, you see the sign that says the silent sands on the outside and you feel the heat radiating off, radiating off of the tent. Damn. It's hot in there. Is it? it feels quite Is pleasant. It? <sighs> Tieflings. Humans. Excuse you. Excuse you. Don't fight Whatever. children. Yes, mother. <laughs> Ladies first. Thank you, Sandor. That's so polite. Hmm. Lons the light strolls in. Yeah. Is San everyone... Sandor will follow. <laughs> Is everyone heading in to this one? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And as you walk in, the first thing you notice is that you all are alone. There's no one else in this tent. The second thing you notice is you are now standing in sand. And you almost, you if you look behind you, you can see kind of the tent, op the opening flapping. You can see like the brief flickers of outside kind of the people and the sounds of the fair, but you don't actually see any walls in this tent. Like you can't see the edges. It just looks like you are in the middle of sand in every direction. The sky above you is bright and clear blue. You can feel the heat radiating off of the sand and from the sun beating down on you. Um, Ipsis. This looks familiar. Would I immediately recognize it? It's hard to say. One big blank open space of sand looks quite a bit like another. Um, but the, the color of the sand is the same. It's this like dusty red almost. Um, the, the sheer emptiness of it all looks the same. 
I've seen this before. I've, I've been here before. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? I... <sighs> yeah. I think this is the place that the rift opened up to. What? Do you remember? In the shop. Yeah, when I was by myself. Not the not the big one in the sky. The one that uh, only I saw. The uh-huh. first one. All I saw was sand and then there was a, a hail storm. This is the same color sand. I've okay. seen it before. I, 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 it has to be. So this is that whatever the hell you saw after the avalanche? Yeah, maybe? Why, why would it be a tent? I mean, where are, where are we even? Hmm. We are out in the sun. Sando, do you need like a sun hat or an umbrella or something? Should you be like, should we be putting lotion on you or something? (laughs) I'll be fine. In case you hadn't noticed, I spend a lot of time out in the sun. You complain about the heat so much, though. And the cold. <sighs> he just takes off his coat and just slings it over his shoulder, so he's essentially in his shirt sleeves. <laughs> Ransom. Is the ground moving? <laughs> do, you, do you feel that? You can see it. Correction, do you see that? A few hundred feet away, you see the sand shifting in a line. Like something's coming towards us? Cool. Cool. Something is coming towards you. I recommend either we move very quickly or brace, and he's going to point it to the group. (sighs) That explains why they looked all beat up. Do we pull like some sort of pose or something like the like the uh, you know the the shadow films? <laughs> okay, no. Okay, it was just an nope. idea. Uh, <laughs> Andrew's gonna brace and draw his sword. I yeah, both of them in fact. Gonna... <laughs> draw my vicious long sword in one hand, my shield in the other, and stand as close to everyone as I can. Ransom's gonna back up a little bit from them and get his shield up. Stay close, Ransom. Point us out. Not too. No, I know. I just need a little space to work. This seems large enough to warrant two long swords. <laughs> and Ipsis is just gonna take up the middle, uh, behind like Lonzo Light and Sandor, like kind of in that middle place, and uh, she's just gonna draw her two daggers, and just gonna wait. <laughs> And as you stand still, you can literally watch as this mass of sand shifting comes closer and closer. And it, 50 feet away from you, it splits into three smaller masses. And then 30 feet away, the heads of three snakes pop up from the sand and Hmm. everyone roll initiative for our first combat of the game oh my god it's happening i'm so excited (laughs) now sandor looks like he's having fun (laughs) also what is up with the initiative it adds um the dexterity afterwards for tiebreakers for me oh Uh. I was so like, I don't have to go look at it. <laughs> I was like, why are there decimals? I'm so confused. <laughs> and then let's see. Uh... I keep clicking it, but it's not working in roll 20 for me right now. Is there a pop up behind your character sheet or anything like that? Uh, not that I'm seeing. How bizarre. Oh. Weird. I can go click it for you if you would like me to. Yeah, if you could, that would be great. I'm going to try and close it out and do it again. And thus the dice lock was passed over. Damn it! 
Hmm. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. Holy. Jeez. <laughs> oh, wow. I'm going to take the one that Scrat rolled since it That's popped totally up on fine. my screen yeah, first. Please. And because I think that you would prefer that. Good lord. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So. As these three shapes kind of move towards you uh, through the sand and coming up out of them, you see these heads pop up and you see fangs. And Ipsis, you are unsurprised by this. For some reason, you are, are just braced for action. Maybe you're standing a little bit closer. And what do you do? Um, in her free hand, she's just going to kind of cast a fireball at the middle one. Okay. If I make a range spell attack, how do I do that? Okay, you're learning. Go. There we go. It should just be on your character sheet under your attack options, probably. Oh, let's see if I can find that. Uh, well, I know how to do it. 13, and then my uh, spell attack bonus is a 5, so that would be... An 18 uh, to hit. 18. Yeah. And that hits. Cool. Uh, so roll that 1d10 for me. Sweet. Yay. Um, and you hit this snake as it... Uh, kind of pops up you hit it square between the eyes and you see it uh kind of catches a few of the edges of some scales on fire and the snake shakes its head and kind of roars a little bit and um it does look it looked like you you hit it pretty square on um but it's still coming kind of right towards you and then the snakes attack and that one lunges directly at you, Ipsis. Does a 13 hit? Yes, it does. Ow. Um, and you have to make a DC save for that poison damage. Um, which it doesn't say here. Probably con. Probably constitution. Okay. Oh, no. And so you take all 17 of that damage. Sweet. Ow. Yeah, she'll just kind of scream and be like, oh, come on. The next snake goes for Lon's Delight. Uh, and that's a 12. Does that hit? No. And the last one goes at Sandor and does a 24 hit. I would like to use my reaction to uh, yeah. impose a disadvantage. On the snake that attacked you? No, that attacked Sandor. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I then does a 13 protection hit. mom. <laughs> <laughs> a 13 does not hit. <clears throat> okay. Um, so these two snakes kind of in tandem, one lashes out at Lon's Delight and one lashes out at Sandor, and you both kind of roll out of the way in the sand, um, kind of dodging away as these snakes kind of coil out and coil back, and they kind of stop where they are. Um, and it is Lon's Delight's turn. Uh, stay close, everyone. Uh, and uh, she will uh, attack the snake that is attacking her. I'm so excited to use this weapon. <laughs> Does a 24 hit? Yeah. <laughs> uh, the secondary damage is confusing me. I think that's that's the viciousness, right? Well, it's, a, it's vi vicious is on a crit. It's that's two handed. Extra ouch. That's two handed. Got it. So um, oh, okay. Yeah. So it's just 12, 12 points of damage, uh, and then I get an extra attack if it's still up. It is still up. Wait, wait. No, I don't, because I didn't take that fifth level in fire. No, I don't. 
<laughs> that one level in Warlock really got gotcha. you. Yep. <laughs> um, okay, and it's still up, but you slash at it and you take like a huge chunk out of the side of its maw. It's almost like looks like a tooth is cracking, and it 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 looks shaken um, and and a little con- like worried from you. It almost like recoils back um, like a cobra. Uh, Ransom. Okay. Uh, how bad does Ipsis look? She's hurt, but not doing too bad. Okay. So, is he within 30 feet of the... He's within 30 feet of the one that Lon's Delight just hit, right? Yeah. Alright, so he's gonna channel Divinity, and he's going to path to the grave. Uh, so you kind of see some black and white energy pulse around his hands and his eyes, and it's going to centralize on that snake. So as an action, I can choose one creature I can see within 30 feet of me, cursing it until the end of my next turn. The next time I or an ally of mine hits the cursed creature, the creature has vulnerability to all of that attack's damage, and then the curse ends. Okay. And he's going to say, uh, Sandor, hit that one. You got it. And it's Sandor's turn. Yeah. So he has dual long swords uh, <laughs> because he's that person. <laughs> uh, after rolling up away uh, with Lon's Delight, he kind of springs back up to his feet and just laughs. And uh, he's going to go for the one that um, Ransom indicated uh, first with the main hand, and then he'll swing again with the other. When Sandor draws these lawn swords, is it kind of like a lazy, or is it like a ha? No, nah, it's just <laughs> like, kind of like whatever. All right, let's do this. <laughs> Bring it. Uh, yep, and he's just gonna go in once. Uh, he leads with the left, notably, and comes in with the right after. Uh, so the right is his offhand. And I hope I know how to roll. <laughs> and that that left hits for sure. Neat. <laughs> and you get to double your damage. Oh. Why can't I get the damage to roll? That's weird. Uh, I got it. Thank you. Um, So that's 22. And you don't just kill this snake. You, 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 you chop its head off very dramatically cool. and very easily. It's almost like lazy for you. It's just kind of like, eh. Mm-hmm. Like you can tell that you still have strength left mm-hmm. after this. Um, and you actually see, though, the snake, this black that Vera had, or that Ransom had cursed it with, kind of pulses around it, and as its head slides off, you see the black kind of seep into it, and then fade into the sand below. And you have that second swing, though, right? Mm-hmm. And so that 13, you kind of whip around to go at the next snake next to you, and it just barely slides out of the way of your longsword. Okay. And then we're back to Ipsis. So there's the snake that attacked you, this one in the middle, and then one that's farther off to the right that had kind of gone after Sandor initially, that's looking um, rather peeved that uh, Sandor kind of attacked somebody else. <laughs> um, she is going to go after the one on the right. And still, so is Ransom still behind her, or did Ransom... Ransom is a few steps behind all of you. Okay, then I'm going to stay put from where I am, and I'm just going to throw another fireball at the one on the right by Ransom, or by Sandor. Okay. Um, Plus five, so 18 again. Okay. And roll that 1d10. Cool. I think I fixed your firebolt now. Did you? Possibly. We'll click it just to give it a test click. There we go. Cool. Awesome. Thank Yay. you. I know I have to I'll have to go in and kind of put everything where it needs to be. At some point we had to have it a simple fight to make sure everybody's character sheets were working. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, thank you for that. Thank you. And so so uh, then these two remaining snakes, one goes after you again, Ipsis. Um, but I'm guessing an eight does not hit. No, it does not. And the other goes after Sandor, seeing that he just 
sliced off somebody's head. Does an 11 hit you? Nope. And both he of you are just- Rolls out of the way. Yep. <laughs> hit the ground and duck and roll off to the side. Yep. Uh, Ipsis, with your grace, your acrobatics grace, you can almost just like so- casually sidestep as this snake lunges at you and you're able to kind of slide back to where you were before. Um, and it is Lon's Delight's turn. There are at least two snakes left remaining. They both look like they've been hit, but they're still kind of ready to go. Everyone stay within five feet, please. Otherwise, I cannot protect you. Uh, and uh, she will st- step towards uh, the snake near um, Ipsis. And she will attack that one using her longsword. Does a 23 hit? Yeah. It'll take six slashing damage. And you know what? She's feeling real good right now. She's going to action surge. And uh, she's going to do it again. Okay. Burn it early. 22. Roll that damage. Girl likes fighting. That's another five damage. And that is exactly enough. Um, so how does Lon, how does this look? How does Lon's Delight chop the snake? And what does her action surge look like? Does it look like a burst of energy? What is it? Oh, you know it's black smoke forms around her for just a second. Uh, as the, uh, her arm, uh, like, she does the one slash, and then it, like, just sort of, like, glitches, and her arm's back there again. There's just, like, a black smoke glitch, and it happens a second time. And as she slices it, and it starts to bleed out... You just see the energy transfer to her. So that's fine. (laughs) This is fine. Everything's fine. You actually see almost the smoke kind of goes down her blade and hits this creature, then recoils back in. (laughs) And Ransom. There's one snake left remaining. Ipsis has been hit, but everybody else is doing okay. Okay. Um, how how far away is the snake? From you, um, maybe twenty feet. Oh, perfect. Uh, he's gonna he's gonna cast command. So that's gonna be a wisdom saving throw. No. Uh, um, so you see his his throat gets encased by his own black ma- black energy magic, and he kind of grins and he snarls out a word in infernal. So the other tieflings understand. He just commanded it to grovel. So the target falls prone and then ends its turn, and it remains prone. Okay, and so this snake. Um, you see it kind of initially it kind of tries to rear back away from this black smoke or whatever and then it 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 lays its head immediately in the sand and pointed snout pointed directly at ransom its eyes flickering and all oh, yours it's sandor's turn <sighs> sandor just sighs seeing that you had to go and make it boring <laughs> <laughs> He's just gonna attack it. <laughs> Stab right on down. Um, I-, I assume, is that like advantage or something? Because it's not moving. <laughs> I think that's I think that's how that works. <laughs> okay. So twenty two uh, hits. Yeah. Uh, and, and, I don't and so know you what... can just you can just click the word longsword in the chat box where, underneath. Oh, and it'll cool. total that damage. Now um, I know how that works. And you you're able to kind of sink your sword, your first hit, kind of into the snake, but it's still it almost like it fights against mm. that blade. Um, but you do have another hit, I believe. Yep, he's got the offhand. Uh, still with advantage? Yep. Okay. And that is just enough. Oh! Uh, you, 
<laughs> and so it, at first the snake is wriggling against the sword and you're having a hard time kind of tracking its movements and finally you just kind of blind stab down into the middle and kind of pierce straight through its skull um, and your sword yeah. digging into the sand on the other side uh, okay. he just gives it a twist and you're done and you've killed all three of these snakes um and you're a little little sandy, a little dirty, um, but all in all, doing okay, I blink. <sighs> yeah. Cinder will jerk jerk the swords up out and just kind of flick the junk off of it before sheathing them. Well, that was fun. That was actually kind of easy. I'm surprised so many people. <gasps> you don't think this was some sort of like pleasure thing, do you? That people were coming in here to be hurt and. Uh, Did we ruin the I, attraction? Oh god, we've ruined yeah. the attraction. I sure hope not, because that would be weird. Why would people willingly want to get attacked by poisonous snakes? People like the strangest things, Ipsis. I imagine this was a battle pit. Is a battle pit. Yeah, well, sign me up for more of that. It's way more exciting. And as you guys are all talking, one of you inevitably kind of glances behind them and you see that the remains of these snakes are now gone. Hmm. They probably respawn every time new challengers enter in. <sighs> That's too bad. Well, I mean, no one comes out dead, right? They just come out wounded. You didn't oh. notice anybody kind of freaking out when they came out. Everybody just kind of looked like, yeah. <laughs> well, that was too easy. Well, I guess we only have one tent left. If we're going to do them all, might as well just finish it. I suppose. Yep. Let's go. Then you're able to kind of head back out the tent you kind of notice offhandedly that there's some areas in the sand that that look like quicksand um, that maybe were ways to catch people unaware. Sand traps. Awesome. <laughs> and uh, you are able to kind of come out of the tent if you kind of look at yourself uh, you realize that you're also covered in this kind of dusty stuff. You look quite a bit like everyone else who exited. Um, kind of a little bit dusty, a little bit dirty, but overall fine. Um, and there's one tent remaining, and it's the one where everybody kind of just looks really wondrous. What's the sign say? And it just says, dreams. <sighs> Who's first? I'll just walk in. <laughs> and Ipsis, as you walk in, you see um, this tent is more similar to the last one where if you as you look behind you you can see the opening of the tent but you can't see the walls you can't see the edges of this space um, instead laying out in front of you are clouds that look like they're stairs up and up and up um, over on one side there's maybe places where you see a couple seated together um, on a cloud bench almost the ground beneath you is white and fluffy although it feels solid beneath your feet and as you look around it seems like in every direction uh, you see the stars and you may even recognize some constellations from your travels with the circus those nights when people would kind of sit under the stars by the firelight in between shows and kind of point things out to each other. Um, She's just gonna start kind of 
walking aimlessly, like not even really paying attention to anybody or anything around and just kind of staring up and getting lost, especially in the constellations and, you know, what appears to be the sky that she remembers so vividly. She's just going to be kind of quiet and staring off for a little bit. And as each of you enter this space, that's what you see. Um, if you stand still long enough, you notice that there are more kind of staircases of clouds that go up and up and up, places to sit or rest, um, platforms high above you, and just the night sky in every single direction. Hmm. Go up. Is huh? this what dreams are like? Fuck if I know. Hmm. Yes, I think. Or at least... At least it's the habitat that inspires them. He's gonna head towards a, scare a staircase. And as you kind of head towards the staircase, it is a little unnerving. Um, it looks much like the ground that you're walking on, which is actually somewhat translucent. You can see stars beneath you. You can see maybe what looks like very far down the ground. Ransom um, is impressed. But you can walk around and you can walk up these stairs if you want. And you're just kind of wandering amongst the stars. Alright, I'll head back down after a minute then, but... He's very impressed by this. And that's it. Nothing else seems to happen. You see people kind of come in and come out. Some people spend a few moments and just kind of like... Look around and like shrug. And leave. Others seem to have been here for a very long time just kind of sitting on their own or in small groups just kind of staring <sighs> Sandra's gonna look to Lon's delight are you okay? yeah it's fine I guess if that's your thing you look upset hmm? You look sad. No, I'm fine. <laughs> it's alright. Let him wander a little while. He is notably not going further into the tent, though. <laughs> is there something you don't want to see? <sighs> not interested in finding out if there is. It's more like how was the mirror thing awful really boring and you seemed a little down when you came out the mirrors didn't really show me anything I was hoping that they'd all be different but they were all the same they all just showed me Yeah. not doing what I normally do they were like you know magic mirrors or something where like you know instead of copying your movements they're doing their own thing but otherwise hmm yeah this place strike you is really fucking weird the attractions I mean don't people normally come to these things to be you know having entertained fun? yeah laughing and having fun and yeah. I don't trust it. I mean, I don't, I don't trust it either, but... I find myself wondering, Sandor... What happened to you? What? What happened to you? Are we really having this conversation now? <laughs> You don't have to have it now. I'm just letting you know what I'm feeling. I'm concerned for you. I want you to be okay. I'm fine. 
I get by, as long as I can get food in my mouth and drink, then whatever else. She just kind of looks sadly at you. <laughs> Don't give me that face. I, this stuff is pretty and cute and everything, but it, it's just fake. But let them have fun. I'm not gonna kill their buzz. No, I totally get it. I was and uh, oh. I was kind of wondering what it would be like to have dreams that actually no. Don't you though? I don't get dreams, I get visitations. Right. Well. Dreams aren't any fun either. They disappear when you wake up. Lonthoid doesn't say anything, but her face screams, WHO HURT YOU?! <laughs> <laughs> Sandor just reaches around behind and pops his flask and takes a long, slow drink. Single tear. I imagine around this is when Ransom returns. <laughs> <laughs> Kinda looks at them both. Oh boy. Well, did you find something pretty out there? It's a little frivolous of me, but I've always enjoyed the stars, so. That's cute. Ipsis will turn around and kind of notice that everyone's congregated and just kind of still aimlessly wander over to the group. It's really nice in here. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Yeah, Ipsis, I... I... We have a feeling of how uh, the other three seem to be feeling about this space, but how do you feel? She feels more at home, I guess, under the stars than even she thought she felt when she was smelling that little vial. Um, it's just nice to feel comfort. Um, it. it she enjoys being outside. She enjoys remembering why she lives the lifestyle she lives and uh, definitely staring at the stars and being in this like dreamscape. It's very, it's very overwhelming for her in the, the best possible way. And you're able to uh... Leave the tent if you all are ready. Nothing Sandor else walks out real fast. <laughs> fast for him. <laughs> um, and you exit the tent, and and you know you see another group kind of exiting the sand tent, kind of covered in red dirt that you now recognize. They look a lot more beat up than you. Um. One's actually kind of like nursing a, a hole in an arm. Um, and everyone roll a perception check for me as we are kind of staring out across this now much more crowded space as more and more people have kind of wandered their way down to these tents. Big money, no whammies. Epsis! <laughs> so bad. Darling! I'm doing so bad today. <laughs> um, Ransom and Blonde's Delight immediately notice that kind of chatting up one section of uh, one like fairly big group kind of drawing a lot of attention is Tristan this uh, head of show that you had 
seen perform somewhat earlier and he's kind of like gesturing broadly to the whole thing maybe slicks his hair back for a moment kind of leans into one person and whispers in their ear and kind of very charismatic very like almost sickeningly charming like you can feel kind of like you're not sure if it's real or not um Sandor, you also notice kind of in the opposite direction of Tristan, um, who is collecting this big crowd, uh, Yo- Johan. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> who we had run into previously. Oh, mm. no. Who seems to be kind of looking around. Oh, fuck. You look like you just swallowed a lemon. <laughs> Not... Not exactly. <clears throat> what do you just... say we go over there and check out Mr. Illusionist doing all his fancy bullshit? Like, now. You see someone, don't you? Mm-hmm. Hide behind me. Thanks. You're a pal. <laughs> I just don't want another fist fight. Uh, is his sister around? <laughs> <laughs> You uh, don't immediately see her anywhere. Okay. She's definitely not near Johan at the moment. Okay. <laughs> uh, yep, he's just gonna walk on the other side of Ransom. Because Ransom tall. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's not an intelligent move to start a commotion here, I don't think so. Just stay nope. there. <laughs> Good plan. Uh, roll that stealth check for me. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Does he yeah. get any advantage from me trying to help at all? I mean, um, yeah, sure. We'll say that your 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 friends are actively trying to aid in you, kind of hiding in the me. crowd. So cool, uh, cool. And if you weren't with three large <laughs> tieflings, <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> this um, is fine. No big deal. <laughs> And and as you're kind of watching, peeking from behind Ransom's shoulder, uh, kind of looking around, you see Johan go <gasps> and start to wave towards you. Aww. And he's like coming up. Um, I would say you have the opportunity kind of to pretend you don't see him. Uh-huh. Yeah, definitely, uh, definitely doing that. He has pegged you. <laughs> yeah. yeah. He's, he's super pretending he didn't notice and is just walking at a faster pace than the usual leisurely stroll. <laughs> Ransom's just trying to make sure he kind of stays slightly as interference. Uh huh. And uh, and are you guys kind of heading to this like crowd that Tristan has acquired to kind of lose yourself in it? Then I'm guessing. Yep. Yep. That's the plan. <laughs> um. And as you kind of uh, make your way over to this group of people, um, you definitely notice that uh, if you're if you kind of keeping like a side eye out you see Johan is trying to get to you but he's almost like struggling to and he keeps like losing you and then finding you again and it's clear that he's like still looking for you but is having trouble keeping track of where you are um is it noticeable for me to see Sandor looking at Johan's direction it, like can I understand that she's trying to avoid him right yeah, now yeah you have a, it's can, pretty clear what's going on. <laughs> can I cast Disguise Self to make myself look exactly like Sandor and head in the opposite direction? Oh, shit. Yes. Oh, no. Okay. <laughs> okay. I just tap Sandor on the shoulder and I want to, like, snap my fingers and look like him and then just wink and head in the opposite direction that they're heading in. That's that girl, handy. That girl is trouble. Of the yeah. best oh, sort. Vera, no, yeah, she, no shit. she's wonderful. Uh, the amount of times that that spell has come in handy on our travels together, you would not believe. <laughs> I didn't say it as an insult for once. Yeah, well, hopefully Johan doesn't catch her either. I think that was his name. One time she disguised herself as an enemy soldier and walked all the way into their barracks. Brilliant. Genius. Yeah. Weaving into the crowd a little more. And we will start with the three of you, um, since Ipsis, as she does, has wandered off again. Um, <laughs> and uh, and you you get closer and you're able to hear Tristan. And he's um, 
Tristan is kind of talking about, uh, I don't know what's up with Vera. Okay. Um, and so Tristan is kind of talking wildly about the, the festival and he's kind of explaining um, to everyone like, yes, yes, this is all me. I've, you know, it is quite a feat to maintain such magic, but I'm trying, I do my best. It is clearly very wearing on me. You see like one bead of sweat roll down his face and he wipes it away. Um, he's very kind of cheesy like about it. Um, <laughs> technical problems. Technical difficulties. Okay, Please sure. hold. <laughs> Okay, I think, we, I think we're okay. We good? Okay. I th I think we're okay. That was terrifying on so many levels. The illusions are creeping through. Welcome, Avatar of Wrath. Thank you so much for raiding. Thank uh, you. And so, so he's he's being Tristan's being very dramatic, kind of bragging about himself and talking about the circus and everything that he's doing. Um, and just generally kind of like exchanging pleasantries. Uh, there's a there's a few people who are clearly kind of fawning over him um, or kind of trying to get his attention. Mm. And he's just kind of chatting and chatting. He's like, oh, yeah, I'm thank you for thank you thank you for your praise i appreciate it but i promise the show later that'll really knock your socks off and of course what we're all here for the star fall at the end of the night that's truly truly the show i don't know about you though but that starfall business makes me real nervous i don't know about you but this guy is full of it he's practically dripping with falsified charisma. Hmm. Or grease. So Thank you so much oh. for the sub. You have a reroll to get. Thank you. Yay. <laughs> um, and as you guys are kind of like listening to him, just kind of interact with the crowd and kind of judge uh, him a little bit, uh, we'll pan over to Ipsis, who looks like Sandor. Uh, Ipsis, are what is your goal here? <laughs> My goal is to just to try to get Johan to notice me and to try and follow me in my direction and then duck out of his line of sight and then change back into me and then meet back up almost like a circle to where the group is. I just want to try and to get him to to get thrown off of the real Sandor. This is a little bit of a stretch of this, but roll okay. a sleight of hand for me to see okay. um, just kind of how well you duck and dodge through this crowd and how much you're able to keep space between you and him because he has noticed you and he is following you and trying to catch up without causing like, like it's clear like he's walking really quickly and he's just, he's trying not to like cause a scene. He even like calls out, um, Sandor, sit, wait, wait for me. <sighs> um, kind of trying to, to get your attention, thinking, uh, but, uh, but I'm over. Uh, uh, he has absolutely no hearing ability whatsoever, uh, and uh, uh, and you're able to kind of duck through the crowd well enough, um, and he's he follows you really well. Um, the question now is, can you lose him? So how are you trying to kind of hide? if so our i imagine where he's standing is he standing like in the middle of the marketplace like are there tents around him or there's, is there's it just a crowd stalls, there's stalls kind of along the marketplace there's a one or two of those tents nearby that you popped into and there's even like the town buildings like you're in a it's not a huge open space um and there is a fair crowd at the moment i just want to duck behind some sort of tent or little alley or just something to try and duck away just fast enough to drop the spell come back to myself and then just casually walk away 
Okay. Hopefully without him seeing me. Feel free to roll that stealth. Okay. And, uh... Johan loses you, and just as you duck behind, um, you catch um, his sister noticing you, um, but she loses you as well. Barely. (laughs) Uh, This is going to kind of fall, like, to a seated position after she kind of evades both of them, just kind of sits and just starts laughing and chuckling to herself and then just gets right back up and tries to find, uh, try to peek out if she can see anybody in in her party. And are you keeping an eye still on Johan who has now met up with his sister? I'll like glance back just to probably double check that they're not following me or noticing me. Okay. But besides that, I I wouldn't like linger too long. Roll a perception check for me as you glance back. And you see them talking to each other. Um, Johan looks kind of frustrated. Like, he's kind of like waving his hands. And and then he kind of like stops and he's just kind of talking to her. Um, But doesn't seem to be keeping an eye on you anymore. Okay. I'll uh, try to see if I can find anybody from the group and try to just wiggle my way back in there. Uh, you're able to pick Lon's Delight out from the, the top of the crowd. She's quite tall, quite a bit above many of the other individuals, so you're able to see her. And they're standing rather close to Tristan, um, who has actually kind of turned his attention uh, to Sandor. <laughs> And he kind of looks at Sandor and he goes, we don't get many humans here. Oh, really? And as you're this kind of close to him, you notice that while he looks human, he does have this kind of like silvery kind of lines underneath the skin that you can see in certain places. Um, And he goes, you seem like a rather grumpy fellow. Here, I wonder if this will help. And he waves a hand and he produces a glass of wine and offers it to you. Thanks, but a little too fancy for me. More for me then, I guess. Hmm. He takes a drink and he's like, So, what brings you to the festival? Sandor pointedly reaches for his flask, uncorks it, and takes a drink out of it. <laughs> Ransom's just standing there watching this because this is great. We found ourselves here. We have invitations. We're seeing the sights. Seeing what the hell this is all about. Yes, it is quite a mystery, isn't it? Something like that. Well, I hope you have a wonderful time. Yeah, it's great. Everyone's having a wonderful time. He kind of- You have to pardon me. I don't smile a whole lot at festivities like this. It's not really my speed. He kind of looks to you and looks to Onslaught and Ransom and and he's just like, the three of you are such interesting company. Is that so? Are you all here together? Yep. Yes, I look after these two. Look at. Uh, sorry. <laughs> um, I mean, I'm. They are independent individuals. Hello. I tried to rob her, and she fed me. So we're sticking together. <laughs> oh, what a fun story! I don't know how I ended up here. You're cute. Do any of us really know how we end up here? Wasn't Why does anyone end up anywhere? Group? How do you know? Are you watching us? I mean, I saw you all walk up the, the crowd together, and I saw you at the... Uh... Oh, she's around. Don't worry about it. Oh. Adventurous soul. 
she's having the time of her life here. So, so do you run this uh, this festival? Yes, the entire festival is mine. For money or fun or what? <laughs> it's definitely not for money. Fun is somewhat relative, I guess. I. I find it entertaining, obviously, and I enjoy entertaining all of you. Um, and, you know, it's important for us to be celebrating this momentous occasion. And as you all are speaking and talking to him, you notice that on the vest that he's wearing is a symbol that looks really familiar to you. Is it the same thing as the, the is it the moon thing? And it's this circle with a star in the middle um, that was sitting on the robes of the monk that you had met. I knew it! Uh, Thank you so much. Burst of hope for the sub. You have a reroll to give. Yay! Thanks, Jess. <laughs> and he he keeps kind of chittering on. He starts talking about himself and 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 someone kind of comes up to him and kind of asks for his attention. He goes, oh, sorry. It was wonderful to meet all of you. I, yeah? Oh, no, that was... I was just hoping to do an insight check. Go ahead. Yay. <laughs> and this is kind of a threat assessment is how Ransom oh, yeah. is doing these kind of insight checks. Um, yep. How we're flavoring them. How <laughs> threatening. <laughs> oh, shit! <laughs> Whoa. Ransom... As he kind of claims this, the role of all of this magic around you, all of these tents, and you are realizing, like, it's starting to register with you how much control and how much power he must have to be able to maintain all of this if he's telling the truth. And as you're standing near him, you can feel um, the magic, that signature kind of radiating off of him. And you know that everything here belongs to him and he doesn't seem to be missing a step. There's For a... all this bravado, hmm. this is a powerful person standing in front of you. And on that nat 20, I will give you that this is a very powerful celestial standing in front of you. He's an ass alarm. Call it! <laughs> Sorry, I'm excited. Um, there's a very sharp, very kind of assessing look in Ransom's eyes, just watching him. Delighted to be here. Good. Thank you I'm for so your delighted. time. Yes, I must. I can't spend too much time with any one group. I have to have to attend to everyone, of course. And I of hope course. I see you all at the presentation later. Of course. Doubtless. Please. Excellent. Don't let us keep you. Wonderful. It should be starting pretty soon. And you look up, and the sun is kind of beginning to set, kind of below the horizon. And then he turns and he kind of waves at you. And, of turns and talks to a few other people. He takes one person, who puts his shoulder, his arm around their shoulders, is kind of walking with them, kind of to back towards the main grounds where you were at before. Uh, looks like he's kind of interacting with them, talking about how, like, yes, yes, I would love to keep talking with you, but you know, we must be getting over there. So walk with me. Let's talk together. Um, and he seems to be kind of waving and shaking hands with people and and being very, very friendly and outgoing. And, yeah. Didn't he seem really nice? Uh. Do you think he was looking at me? Too nice. That is a very dangerous individual. What's got your hackles up? I mean, other than the fact that he's so fucking charming, it has to be fake. He's not kidding. Everything here is his. I can feel the magic off of him. He seems Everything to... here is under his control. That is a dangerous individual. He seems so powerful. Great. I take it you're attracted to power, Lon's Delight. What? No? What? No? <sighs> that was Fuck. a terrible, terrible refusal. Work on your lying skills. I beg you. Ipsis, you kind of join in with the group as they're having this conversation. Ooh, hey, hey there. Hey, um, I don't uh, know if I helped, but I think <sighs> I did. Uh, did you lose him? I lost him and then found his sister and then quickly lost her because 
fuck. Luckily, luckily <laughs> enough, I was changing back at that point, so I don't think she saw me for more than just a minuscule <sighs> second. But at least he's not on this side of the festival, and they're thrown off a little bit, so you got more time. Okay, great. What happened great. with uh, the the big one over there? Oh, uh, he just said some stuff. He was he just was really shooting. sweet and nice and powerful and, you know, then went to go and do other things. He was schmoozing and he reeks of powerful magic. Uh, yeah. You want to mm. tell her about the fact that this is all his shit? Yeah, basically. This entire, everything about this pulses with the same energy he puts off, so... I imagine he has control over every single tent at- attraction here. I don't know if it's the plane itself as well, but possibly. Doesn't make me inclined to want to go into any more of those tents. I think it would be better to act like we don't suspect anything is awry. Yeah, sure. Well, to be fair, nothing crazy has happened so far. So as long as we act like everything's okay, maybe everything will be okay. Hmm. Optimistic. Not terrible. Not a terrible hey, plan. Stick around. I might be able to teach you. All right. Well. What do y'all want to go do now? Well then, Janet, thank you so much for the sub. So many subs tonight. Thank you so much, everyone. Let us know if you want the retail rerolls to go to. Uh, well, I mean, it sounds like there's going to be a presentation later, and there's the star fall, the actual falling of the star, I guess, and, well, those are the two main things, right? Maybe we can grab a drink or something before we uh, go? I'm not super inclined to grab anything to eat or drink around here, either. And as you're kind of standing there in a crowd, you see that people are beginning to kind of move back towards the other end, towards um, where that bigger open field was. And Lon's Delight, you do see Maritza kind of off in the distance a little bit. Um, (laughs) She doesn't seem like she's seen you, um, but she's there with um, the bard that she had been kind of performing with earlier. It looks like she's actually coming out of one of the tents uh, that had performers in it. Um, and she seems like she's like kind of closing up the pegs of the tent front, kind of flipping over the sign and kind of heading off. Um, maybe we should go and find a drink or something, or maybe we should, you know, we don't want to, you know, miss the good spots for the presentation. Um, we could uh, also, uh, you know, those tents, the fighting tent, that was cool. I wonder if Sandor can do it on his own. Um, You're rambling. No, I'm not. You are. <laughs> can, Problem? Does Ransom, does Rans- can Ransom, like, follow what, what she's so obviously trying to not look at and see? Maritza? Ransom is trying to crouch down a little bit so she's not so tall. <laughs> I imagine uh, because of that Lon's Delight is not making it particularly unobvious so. huh afraid to talk to your friend again I made a fool of myself last night I remember that much she was endeared she thought it was cute besides didn't she say there was some work she had or something it's a very big haze. Look, you can only pretend like the alcohol hit you that hard for so long. You both said I was terrible. Yeah, Those you were, were but in, terrible. But she was into it. Apparently, that's what she likes, so you've got one up. You should go. Huh? Go. Look, okay. Maybe the alcohol didn't hit me so much, okay? But speaking to someone like that sober? It should be Sit. even easier this time. If you could do it while you were shit-faced, you can do it now. 
You Listen. drew your sword and almost tried to fight the an invisible enemy yesterday after I got stabbed and you were shit faced. I think you can talk to somebody while you're sober. Oh come on, Ipsis, you know that stabbing things is much easier than understanding. Lance. Here. He tosses the flask to her. <laughs> oh, this is about to get interesting. Whatever the hell's in there is real strong, by the way. Unlike Ipsis's flask, which is half day old whipped cream. I was just <laughs> gonna say, at, like as she, oh no, as Sandor flips it to Lons and Lons is like just holding it. I'm going to remember and then just like excitedly take out my flask and kind of like look in it, smell it, <laughs> and then just turn it over. Oh no, and just Aww. and then just like kind of talk. I'm not even gonna put it back on my purse, I'm just gonna toss it off. I don't, oh, want, to no. it. I don't want it anymore. So I'm just gonna toss it. Soured milk, no. <laughs> yeah, it smells real bad. <laughs> don't and get I that know. on your clothes, it'll never come out. In fact, like somebody who's kind of walking by like... <laughs> <laughs> now oh. she knows. Now she knows. Why did you keep that? I, I don't know. I just maybe <sighs> thought maybe I would need something later, and it was available at the time, and I, I don't know, I just thought it maybe it lasted longer. No, no, that, it's cream. <sighs> well, now I know, now I know. <sighs> ah, what's in this flask? <laughs> <laughs> uh, just a little mixture of mine. <laughs> Okay, 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 I can do this. I almost I can do this. want to know, but I really don't think I want to know. I, can I do don't know. This. It's been adding up over a couple of months. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> if it's mostly empty, he just fills it with whatever he can find. <laughs> Lons to light heads towards. Heads, head, yeah, heads towards Messina. Give me back my flask, please. Uh, he, he, she was going to walk away with it in her hand. Uh, 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 uh. Oh, uh, yes. Thank you. And she takes another draft before passing it back to you. <laughs> Go get him. <laughs> okay. this, Good luck. This tastes, this tastes something like a mix between like moonshine and just straight grain alcohol. Like it's real. It's just straight. It's not. Burn. It's not good. <laughs> There's this weird aftertaste. Like for a moment, it tastes kind of like cinnamony, and then like the next moment, it just it tastes kind of like whisk. It's this weird mix of things, and it's just it's it just mm -hmm. hurts. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Okay. okay tastes okay, like okay. pain. <laughs> oh, okay. 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 Walk um, I'm gonna walk over and like. Like, she's gonna try and, like, make it look like she's gonna walk past them, and, like, she notices them off guard, but it's so obvious. She's like, Oh, it's you. Oh. oh, sweetie. I remember you from yesterday. How are you feeling? Better now? I felt awful earlier. How are you feeling? Are you feeling good? Oh, I'm feeling great. I had a wonderful day. Are you sure you're okay? You look a little, little, little pallid there. She kind of like pats you on the shoulder. I didn't have enough courage to come and speak to you, so I drank some of my friend's drink and it was disgusting. Oh, that's cute. <laughs> <laughs> um. Oh, I don't even know what to say. That's so touching. <laughs> Check. Uh, how about... You come with us down to the the big performance, and you can come stand with us, okay? And she kind of holds out an arm. I promise I don't bite. <laughs> uh, and the uh, monster light sort of like puts her hand on her shoulder. <laughs> Rather than like on her arm, like they just just and and she just kind of grabs your arm and loops it around hers, um, 
and she looks back over and she's looking for um, the rest of you. What are you all doing? <laughs> and she kind of waves back at Sandor. Just, no. uh, let's then, go! And she just kind of turns to look at Lancelot and she's like, so mm. I feel like I didn't really get to know much about you the other day. Where are you from? What are you doing here? What's tell tell me about you or tell me about your friends? How about I talk? I'll tell you a little bit about me. So I've been performing for a very long time. It's a lot of fun. Me and my friend here uh, met up a, a little while ago. We realized we both had invitations to this party here. And when we heard that there was a star falling, we couldn't do anything but uh, come, of course. I mean, do you have any idea how valuable a fallen star can be? You no, know, yes. You know, if there is a fallen star, we could surely use somebody as big and strong as you to kind of come help us get it. Would you excuse me for just one moment? I just need to run to the little girl's room. Of course, of course. We'll meet you down. We'll meet you down at the performance space. It'll be great. Okay, I'll see I'll you down at the performance space. Uh, Lons the Light turns and runs down the nearest alley and starts loudly vomiting. <laughs> Um, and you all witness all of this. <laughs> uh, oh no. I should have warned her. <clears throat> Probably should have warned her. Uh, oops. Ipsis will just start kind of walking towards her. Oh. Uh. How, how are you doing? <laughs> to like pat her head, rub her back a little bit. You did better this time. She wanted to know about me? That's not a bad thing. But it's I... so easy for you to pick up random people off of the street. Why is it so hard to talk to her? She's very pretty, yes, but she's just a person. <laughs> it's okay, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay. She'll just like rub your back, pull your hair back. Now motion for like Ransom to come over to help. He's gonna come over. You were doing better that time. She looked enamored. Looks like we got a new friend! Thank you, we are Nerdsmith for the raid. Welcome in. I... I... I don't get it. Lonsolite, I'm going to tell you something. There are many things in life that we are not supposed to get. That we may never get. And it might be eternally frustrating and drive you to have sleepless nights in which you lie awake and wonder why, but they exist. You just have to let them be. Her being into you is probably one of those things. People see things in us that we don't see. She invited us to go with her down to the performance area. Accept her invitation. We will stay slightly apart so that you can attempt to have an actual conversation with her. I don't know if I can. You can. But like when she starts talking, uh, then I freeze, and then when she tries to make eye contact, I have to look anywhere else, and... 
it's real s scary. Yeah, I guess. That's connection for you. All connection is scary. Just go into it thinking that you can. I'm being nice right now. If I can be nice, you can talk to her. It says it's just kind of like looking at the ground, avoiding eye contact, and then chuckling a little I bit. I hear you. Go on. I'm just here. I'm just listening. I don't have any input really in the situation. I'm not quite somebody who has that experience. So I'm just not going to say anything. I don't. I've never wooed anyone or been wooed and never had the urge, but I've seen other people. That's because you're blind, Ransom. <clears throat> sure. Just go for it. Have some fun. It's supposed I mean, to be fun. It's a festival. We're at a festival. So, I mean, the worst thing that can happen is you never see her again very true so make the most of it i mean if if you become friends if you interest are like if you're both interested then why not what do you have to lose what if i mess it up then you wait for the next beautiful person to come by who makes you feel that way i think that's how it works right Okay. I'll go down to the performance area and I'll try and speak to her. I will speak to her. I think... There you go. Yeah. I think that's a great idea. And we'll be right behind you if you need any help. Perhaps. And as you kind of gather yourselves and kind of peek around the corner you see that you're you're kind of the only people really left over here and it is very nearly full dark you see the last kind of rays of the sun begin setting um, on the horizon I suppose we ought to hurry um let's go ready to go you are yeah And you're able to make your way down through what you've already seen, but quieter now. Kind of the smells of food have, are starting to fade. Um, and you head back down to that large performance space again. On one side of this big grassy area, you see a very large, kind of more ornate tent, maybe covered in ribbons. Um, a large stage stands in front of it. Um, and you see... Uh, Tristan kind of standing in the middle of the stage very calmly kind of waving at people kind of chatting with the people right in front of the stage etc um, off to one side um, you notice you see um, Maritza and and her friend kind of standing together chatting Lon's the yeah, Lon's delight. Um, a look comes over her face, and she suddenly looks like she's about to go and fight the snake. <laughs> she looks like she might draw her weapon at any second, and like she's gonna march over. Oh gods! I tried. I tried. Welcome to the academy. Please take your seats. <laughs> and she notices you. And kind of smiles. Hello, yes, I'm big and strong. I've been a fighter for many years and I like to do mercenary work quite often. 
wonderful. I, you're, um, oh boy, that was, you, you speak really fast. <laughs> um, it, it's nice to hear some more about you. Uh, are your friends going to join us or are they just going to kind of stand 20 feet away and stare at us? Uh, they said that they would give us room to have a conversation and possibly give me hand signals as to whether I'm doing well or not. <laughs> I have never had somebody try quite this hard to impress me before. Uh, you make a girl blush. Is that a good thing? Uh, yes. <laughs> good. Good. <laughs> and <laughs> it, it's oh, oh goodness, I don't even know what to say now. Um. Anyway, you know I. I feel like we should start fresh. And she kind of holds out a hand and to shake your hand. Lonsda like grips it firmly like a warrior. She is in for the penny. She's in for the pound. She's going to squeeze the knuckles slightly and try and shake that hand off the arm. <laughs> oh boy, that's a firm handshake. And she kind of takes her hand back a little bit. She's like, I'm Maritza. It's very nice to meet you. And this is my friend, Marius. <laughs> she's even I've noticed I've done it she's even taken the the slight mum stance the hands on hips I've done it naturally she's she's definitely <laughs> do doing that whilst talking yes okay good uh we've shaken hands this is good <laughs> yes and you know let's uh don't worry we don't have to make too much conversation we can just enjoy the show together just relax it's okay <laughs> Okay, and she'll just like 90 degree swivel hands still on hips, like <laughs> looking at whatever we're looking at as it's done. <laughs> um, and as it gets full dark, um, you see kind of Tristan step back and kind of straighten up his vest and kind of brush himself off and, and stand um, in the middle of the stage and he actually pulls up his dark a uh, black cloak and the hood back above his head and he just says tonight we're here at the festival of the fallen star to celebrate this event that must be uh that must be a gift from the gods we see it here and a very only very rarely and we look forward to seeing it tonight but i'm here to tell you a story story of how this may have come to be and you see his hands begin to swirl and twist and he kind of steps off to one side of the stage um which you were almost expecting it to be him center stage given the personality he was portraying before but he almost fades into the dark at the edge and instead the show is the illusions that you see covering the stage in front of you and at first uh, you see a tall hooded figure that looks quite like him, but this is large. It's blown up so that everyone at the edge of the crowds can see. And you see them striding forward. And at the other side, you see another figure in, drenched in gold with almost a cape flowing behind them. And you see this they're more like shapes. You can't really make out features, but it's very clearly Tristan and another individual. Um, and they stand across from each other and you begin to see the swirls of magic that are transferring between the two of them. Um, they, they crouch almost in a posturing stance. At one moment, you see two swords come out, one black and one gold, uh, slashing at each other. And you see... Um, each person kind of step a step back and it's almost like you have this leaning one way and then leaning the next as they're both almost perfectly matched and only make progress uh, when one makes a mistake. And then um, the that image kind of fades. It almost grows smaller as if it's fading into the background of the scene. And then instead you see four more figures kind of come in from across stage almost as they're if they're being from introduced from the behind the curtain one after the next um you see um just kind of these four shapeless figures um that 
uh, appear to be kind of holding hands in a line and they kind of march up to this dueling group and they're watching this duel happen back and forth. And then they stand in between them and stop the two of them and throw them apart. And the image begins to fade just as, as you look above you in the night sky and a meteor shower begins. And everyone stops and stares at the lights above them, even as Tristan continues to make these shapes on the stage of these four figures now opposed to, the, to these other two, kind of duking it out back and forth. And you can tell that these four figures are not as strong as the other two, but yet they stand firm. And eventually the golden figure and the dark cloaked figure kneel in front of the other four and kind of give up. And just as they kneel, you see the sky light up in every direction. And it looks almost as bright as day. It's almost blinding to look up as you see this large white glowing mass streak across the sky and fade and fall behind the mountains on the other side. And as this light streaks across the sky, you notice around you in the crowd, the crowd is starting to shake and be shocked. You hear whispers and noise and chatter. As in these spaces, you begin to see these rips appear again, these glowing cracks in this in space and they're smaller this time you can't see through them but they look exactly as what you've seen before as if this world is almost splitting itself apart having trouble holding itself together through one the largest crack you briefly see what looks like dawn a town just like this one, but still covered in snow and ice before it snaps shut. And you feel the ground shake at that moment that you feel like the impact would have happened as this glowing mass hits the earth. It is vicious enough and violent enough that the crowd kind of stumbles in a wave, kind of following with the shake of the earth, but it's not enough to, it's not as strong as the avalanche was before. It's not like this shake is coming up from the earth, but rather as if you hit the top of a table and the glasses on top of it kind of shake in the water and then moves. Wow, that looks pretty powerful. And another figure appears behind the crowd. And as you turn, now that it's dark again, and you see some meteor showers. You see some little meteors kind of fly through the sky briefly. But it's not anything like it was before. But coming up from behind you, coming up from the path through the circus, you see someone dressed all in shining gold. And as they walk, the tents behind them change color. They're actually emitting light so you can see this happening as they walk through and everything behind them changes from this black and white to the gold color as they walk through and they walk up and the crowd instantly parts like making way for this person almost instinctively each one of you even feel that need to step back and leave space as this person comes through and you're able to get a good look at them and you see a tiefling woman standing in front of you. Her skin a yellow color and her horns on the top of her head are tall. They are high. She is probably naturally maybe five, six, five, seven, but her, her horns are so high they give her three or four more feet and she towers above the rest of you. And these horns are tall and they are curved, almost like whirling. And you look about like the way her hair is done that it almost looks like there's this crown sitting on top of her head. And she steps forward. 
and walks up the stairs and you can see Tristan coming coming out of the shadow. He has thrown his hood back and he looks different. He doesn't have this cocky air about him, but instead he seems firm, feet planted firmly on the ground in opposition. And there's nothing you can do. You feel like you can't move. You're in shock of what is happening in front of you. As the two of them are encased in something that looks like a protective dome, kind of protecting them from you or maybe you from them. It's hard to see. And they speak to each other for a moment. They seem very familiar. And then suddenly you see these bursts of black come out of Tristan's hands as they push this other figure away who takes out this large great sword from behind them that is shining with radiant light and tries to slap down against this magic that Tristan is, Tristan is throwing at them. And this goes back and forth for a long time. You are standing here in wonder as this battle is playing out before you and yet you cannot seem to move, you cannot seem to interrupt and it is encased in this translucent veil almost like you could pass through it, but it feels like it's stopping you from getting anywhere close to them. Until finally, they both appear exhausted and tired. And in between them appears a third figure with wings carrying a large staff in one hand with an amethyst sitting at the top and the other hand carrying a scale which tilts one way and then the other and one way and then the other until eventually it stops in the middle the winged figure looks at both of them and almost shrugs and then disappears again And this dome kind of lifts. And you see left standing in front of them an exhausted Tristan. And this other figure who looks tired almost walks away into the forest and goes dark as they leave. Kind of like they're dull. But many of the tents behind you stay golden. Not all of them. It's almost like this other figure has taken over part of the festival. And you see a balance, one side in black and white and the other side in this golden color. Is this all... You were able to move again. Is this all normal? Have you experienced this before? I... No. I just came here... When you hear about a meteor shower, which I assumed is what they meant by starfall, you know what they can make out of meteor, right? I came here... hoping it would be helpful. I came here looking for maybe some people that would come with me to go find it. Something that powerful falling out of the sky? You have to be curious. I wasn't expecting anything like this. We, we should do something. Halfway through that conversation, Lonzo, I remembered who she was speaking to. <laughs> I don't. What is there to, to do? I, I, like I said, I just came here for the star, <laughs> and assuming there was one, otherwise I would have just gone home. But I wasn't expecting any of this. This is. Are you way from above my pay grade? Are you from dusk? No. Where are you from? Um, I I grew up in Portsmouth. <laughs> it's a little town by the ocean. Uh, it's 
I mean, I, I've come through Dawn before, um, traveling. I mean, when I, I grew up there and I left and I came through Dawn and that's where I met Marius, who's kind of standing next to her. He's been pretty silent this entire time. Oh, um, I'm sorry. But... Is Marius? Oh, hi. I, I... I don't talk a whole lot. Oh. You know, I'm just, I'm just here. I, I, I kind of wandered around, and when I met Maritza, and, and she was looking for, um, you know, someone to, to help her make some money, and I was looking for someone to help me make some money. We make a pretty good team, and you know, kind of guided her through John because I'd been there before with my old troop, um, and we wandered around for a while until we woke up one morning with these letters. And and we opened them and read them and agreed and then we were here <laughs> and I mean we knew it looked like dawn but it wasn't dawn and then reading the letter we heard about Starfall and so we decided to stay obviously because who do you know how much money you can make from meteorite do you know what you can make out of that no it's how you make adamantine armor and weapons <laughs> oh. And it's worth a fortune. <laughs> and both of us have been down on our luck for a really long time. So you're yeah. not just performers? I I mean we couldn't have it's not like I'm gonna sit there and like craft an arm any armor, but I could I imagine that anyone would buy it off of us and we'd be set for life. Even if we just split it and went our own separate ways. I mean we've been together for I don't know, a couple months now. Oh, I mean, not, not together. Just like hanging out. <laughs> Who says that, Marius or her? Maritza. <laughs> Maritza. Okay. I don't know. All this is really scary to me. Me too. Don't worry, I'll look after you. Oh, I'd appreciate that. Just stay within five feet of me at all times. I, uh, I think I can do that. <laughs> Let's see what the rest of my group has to say. Ransom, Ipsis, and all she says just by like turning around. <laughs> like, uh, uh, where are, how far away are all of you? How are you <laughs> feeling? Like, are you having your own, while this conversation is going on with Lon's Delight and, and Maritza, are you guys also having a chit chat? <laughs> I, I think we might. <laughs> I imagine so. I definitely would have probably said something about the illusion. Just been like, wow, that was. Up until the end, you know, really, it was really good. Yeah, what the fuck was that? I kind of am wondering how much of that was actually illusion. Oh, I mean, I guess you have a point. It started to get real, kind of, I guess, yes. real towards the end. Yeah. A golden tiefling and this black and white Asimar, and then the duality that it created. Poetic, Wait. but strange. Is it? Somewhat. It's way the fuck over my head. Mm. Language what the hell that was. <laughs> and that's when Lon's delight dives into the conversation. <laughs> you hear her call. She you seizes her, her chance. <laughs> <laughs> Calls all of your names, and you were also en engrossed uh, in kind of conversation. You didn't notice at first, but then you hear the admonishment of mom. Yep. Ransom actually does the jump that I just did. He's like, 
Now, Meritza, uh, this is Ipsis. She's wonderful. Uh, this is Sandor. Uh, he uh, far less wonderful. Nice to meet you. He said Noted. it. Um, and uh, this is Ransom. They can kind of be grumpy, but they really mean well. Also they all noted. really mean well. Uh, hello, no, speak it's, for it's, yourself. It's nice to meet you all. Um, uh, my name's Maritza, and this is Marius. He's uh, a friend. He just kind of like... Um, Maritza is dressed very finely in kind of performers, dancers, garbs, very kind of loose fabric, um, all blue. It actually matches her hair. Um, you... Uh, Marius, on the other hand, is kind of in kind of simple brown clothing. Um, he he seems to be um, pretty uh, pretty okay with kind of fading into the background and letting Maritza kind of take the foreground and the all of the attention. You see on his hip, you see a set of, uh, of uh, pipes uh, with some different uh, purple ribbon tied around them, kind of tying them to his belt. Um, that's really the only remarkable um, thing about his personage. So do you two have any idea what the hell all that was? <laughs> I, I think if I'm talking to Fonz Delight here, um, I think we're just as much in the dark as you guys. <laughs> okay. I mean, I we came here to to see the star, see if we could follow it, uh, see if we could find it before anybody else did. Uh, you know, that's, and that's it. That's the end of it. I, nothing, we were not expecting whatever that was. <laughs> I mean, it was really impressive. I don't, I don't really know what the point of it was. Yeah, me either. It was quite a performance. Story of creation and balanced, wasn't it? Huh? How it came to be, he said. And then the balance between the gold and the black and the white. What the hell does that even mean, though? I'm not entirely sure, and I'm also not entirely sure as to the point of it. But I'm quite curious to find out. However, if you two are wanting the star, wouldn't it land in the mountains? Oh, uh, back up the mountain again? That'll be a trek. <sighs> Well, well, if this matches, and you hear Marius go, well, uh, if this uh, matches Dawn, we don't have to go up the mountain. We could go through. My point that I was just trying to make, I mean, especially if it's not winter, even going up the mountain, if that's how we had to go up, maybe it wouldn't be as bad. That's fair. I, you know, there's still a lot of snow up in the mountains this time of year, but... We could just go through the caves. I mean, it looked like the star landed on the other side. You know the way? Um, I know the entrance. Uh, and I know the exit. The middle is a little tricky, though. Fantastic. What if we're going through, though, and everything... Still... Changes. It's a risk well, then we'll help. take. It's a lot oh, yeah. faster through than over. <sighs> we can get through in a day, maybe. And what's in it for us if we do hope you get to that star? Oh, uh, like and it's, it's like gives it just a look like, don't ruin this for me. <laughs> <laughs> I think I know. <laughs> well, I mean, to be fair, if we're risking a lot, I'd imagine a part of the cut of the star, at least. Of course, I wouldn't ask, I wouldn't expect you to help us for anything less. Um, you know, like I, Marius knows at least the mountains and the land of dawn really well, so if the mirror stays through, you know, hopefully he can guide us, but, you know, and I'm pretty good in in a pinch, kind of getting through the woods and things like that, but you know, we don't have a whole lot of brawn between the two of us. We wouldn't ask you to help us without providing you with some benefit. 
Look, if you're paying, I'm there. If you're paying. Outside DM question, super, super quick. Yes. How was it on the festival flyer or did somebody tell us at some point how long the festival is? Didn't say. It didn't say? Okay. Um, you know that the the main part of the festival seems to be this event that just happened. Um, so it'd be logical that it's not sticking around too long. Um, and Marie says she's like, well, I we could maybe I mean we make pretty good money performing. <sighs> um, especially here at this festival, we've made a bunch. Um, I could probably give each of you something like 10 gold up front and but then obviously we would cut our share of the star um, one, two, three, four, five, six ways I wouldn't it's expect a start. you guys I mean if 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 it's a if a star that big if that meteorite hit the ground that's enough money for all of us to retire on hmm well, that's all I need to hear. I'm in. Someone needs to keep you alive. <laughs> I'm definitely in. Uh, I don't think clearly we should... Clearly, monster light is. Yeah, yes, I'm in, but I don't think that we should go tonight. I mean, there might be some people who are... going to power through to get there first. I mean, there's a few people at this festival. Yeah, we can't be the only ones with this idea. But I still think a rest before we go through the mountains would be a good idea. Marius, you say you know a way through the mountains? Uh, yeah, I uh, I am familiar with the caves. Is we this like through. secret smuggler information that possibly everyone else here wouldn't know? Or is this, um, you know, everyone knows about the caves. We can just go through the caves. I mean, it's not something that people talk a lot about. I mean, they're they're dark, they're not the easiest to get through, so people don't usually use them. It's tight, it's not like you can fit wagons through them. Um, hmm. It's not massive. I mean, it's not like tight, like we have to like crawl or squeeze through, it's just you're not going to fit a caravan through. It's not a useful travel route, so I haven't really heard anybody else whispering about them or talking about them. Um, okay. It's pretty early right now. If we catch an early night, we can wake up early. We can head through the caves early. Maybe get there before anyone else can scale the mountain or go around or do whatever they want to do. I think that's a really good plan. I I definitely think we should get rest before. Um, make sure that we have everything that we need, get prepared in the morning. And she looks at Ipsis, who is still kind of beaten and bruised from before. And she goes, you know, maybe make sure we're all in one piece and healed up before we go. Definitely seems fair. Oh. Thank you so much, Billy Sage. You just come in and dropped a thousand bits on us. Um, good morning to you, too. <laughs> if you'd like to make something happen, like introduce a complication, let us know. Oh, no. Um. And she goes, well, uh, we... Uh, we were staying at midnight... Uh, our stuff's all there. Um, so, do you want to meet there in the morning? I don't. Are you staying there? Are you? Where are you staying? Midnight. We were staying with Fletch. He has the most wonderful hot spring. Oh, he There's does. That it's too. really great in there. I've been there when I've been in Dawn. <laughs> it's really handy. <laughs> Um, well, let, let's, I don't know where you guys want to stay, but we can meet outside of midnight in the morning and, you know, it'll be good to travel with you. And she looks at Fawn's delight. What? <laughs> you, you smile and you say, you. <laughs> yes, it will. Lons. <laughs> he gives her a thwack on the back. 
<laughs> She's gonna be delighted. Her pleasure. Good, good. I'm glad. Um, so I'll see you in the morning. He picks up her hand and waves. <laughs> with it. There you go. What just happened? Ipsis. <sighs> Ipsis, you feel that tickle on the back of your neck. Can I swing around and see if there's anything or anyone behind me? Sure. Roll that perception check. Oof. Oh, let me make sure about something. Hold on one second. I don't want to make that mistake again. (laughs) (laughs) And you uh, see the crowd um, parting. Um, And you don't see anyone really looking straight at you or kind of being shady um but you do see kind of at the edge of the crowd just a flick of attention um from what looks like a a red reddish tiefling who then kind of disappears into the crowd If she lost sight of her, um, she's going to make a mental note of what she looks like personally, and then um, kind of take a second to bump Sandor in the shoulder and ransom and just quietly mutter, keep a lookout for a red tiefling woman. I don't know if she has anything to do with anything. But I just have a weird hunch. So just uh, be on the lookout. You got it. Absolutely. Thanks for the warning. And then she'll turn to Lon's delight. Are you okay, Lon's? What just happened? (laughs) I think (laughs) we got a date, technically. (laughs) Yeah. A lot just happened. Congratulations. She like really likes you. Date. Why? I'm gonna... <laughs> Apparently awkward is real cute. Remember what I said about there being things we just are never going to get? I mean, I get it. Sometimes it's nice when they're not too bright. Or seen that way. And I'm gonna take her by the shoulders and like look at her square in the face. Just be like, I don't want to add one more thing to your plate. And I don't want you to worry. But if you see a red tiefling woman, just be wary. I don't know what she means or who she is or where she's from, but I just got a weird vibe. Until it gets real serious as soon as you say red tiefling. What shade of red? Uh, I recount the exact shade I believe I saw. (laughs) Is it kind of pinkish? That was kind of pinkish. Yeah, there was a slight pink hue to it. Did you see their hair? Strawberry blonde, like mine? Uh, It was a quick flash. All I noticed was red tiefling and woman. I check Ipsis' back for poison darts. Do, uh, do Do you know her? I'm going to guess this is the sister. Shimmer. Oh no. Yeah. She uses underhand tactics. You're in grave danger. Great. I'm <sighs> really impressed you saw her, actually. Well done, Ipsis. Uh, Order yeah. you want to be seen. Well, to be fairly honest, I felt something on the back of my neck 
which is the same thing I felt before I had the dagger thrown at me. So I kind of acted on instinct and just turned around super quick and that's what I got. So I don't know if she's trying to get me to notice her, but if she is, it's definitely working. Awesome. So we need to be paranoid now is what you're saying. Super My natural paranoid. state of being. She's like oh, literally good. the perfect assassin. Like, she's why I got abandoned. Okay, so... We keep our eyes open. I'm always paranoid. Welcome to the club. I mean, if I get shanked, I get shanked. But why Ipsis? I can guess. You like her. You took her You've on adopted her. She's your family, and Shimmer kind of isn't anymore, if you think about it. You haven't seen her. She probably thinks she's been replaced. <laughs> but for somebody who is like that, do, does that even matter? Is that really what this is about? Is a family feud? I don't know. Might just be more about hurting her. Take away something she likes. How long has it been since you've seen her, Lons? It was maybe eight. And it's taken her all this time, right up until now, for her to, to seek out some sort of giant revenge plot not, with some person that she didn't even know you were going to run into? Quite true. That's not quite true. I mean, sorry. I last saw her when I was a teenager, though, when um, uh, when my father left me in the in the hotel, he took Shimmer with him. Then she really was, the, even as a teenager, the perfect assassin. She used the cover of <gasps> "We Have to Watch Out." We're at a festival. She used his cover as a bard. Fantastic. She pretends to be a magician. Good to know. Ipsis, can you disguise yourself again? I definitely think I can, but can it doesn't yourself... last for long. That's okay. Can you make yourself into me? I, I can. Just humor me for a moment. And um, I'll snap my finger and make myself look like Ransom. <sighs> Just try not to look like you for now. Look, And he just kind of pulls up his hood and shakes his hair back down to kind of get his appearance back to the way it normally goes. Um, which is actually pretty different. Um, just keep looking not like you for as many times as you can right now, basically. Well, I'll definitely do my best. I can only do it a couple times a day, so hopefully with that rest, we'll be able to recharge for tomorrow, but yeah. we're going to have to try to bed down soon. Let's get you indoors. Do you think it's safe to go back to Fletch's, or should we try to go back to Midnight? Oh, no. Maybe we should go back to Midnight. If they're trying to get at people I care for, and I've been fawning over Marcina. Marisa. That's a good idea. Perhaps also the four of us should stay in the same room. Keep an eye on one another. Probably not the worst idea. I definitely feel a little bit better that way, even knowing that I could probably protect myself. I just don't want to be alone. Right. Okay. So we're taking a watch, right? No, of yes. course. Absolutely. Yes. Do, we, do we, like, would it be creepy if we watched Maurice's room as well? I don't think do you so. Know, do you even know which room is hers? We can probably find out. Could we? Let's... Yeah. I can probably find out. Let's go he's gonna start walking 
Likewise. I'll follow behind Sandor, not too close to Ransom. Ransom just kind of pulls his hood up a little bit to kind of shadow his face, and he hunches some. <laughs> He's tall! Um, so Ransom is kind of in front of the pack, the actual Ransom? Yeah. Ransom, off in the distance, you see Johan and his sister talking. Sandor, get behind fake me. And Ransom's gonna pay attention to this as they're moving. Got it. Sandor's just gonna oh. kind of slow his pace a little and then fall behind fake Ransom. <laughs> Roll an insight check. Yay, my favorite. You're good at those, though, right? I love- they're my favorite. Uh, I'm gonna actually use a reroll for that. Yes, I am definitely gonna use a reroll <laughs> for that. Re Strong use of reroll. <laughs> um, ransom has ransomed again. <laughs> ransom ransoms. Um, so, the first thing you notice about this conversation is it's very heated. Mm-hmm. Um, the second thing you notice is that Johan doesn't seem to be this kind of pushover. I knew it. He's talking very strongly to his sister. They're they're arguing he's not like letting her back down. Um, but they're they're whispering very quietly, arguing. It's not like they're yelling at each other, but it's just like <laughs> um and and seeing as ransom ransoms, um, you get this vague sensation now that you're seeing him kind of more normal that you recognize him. Oh no, I do. It's not really clear. Like you don't, you don't like. It's not like oh, this is so and so. Uh huh. But, but maybe I've seen in him some before. of the same circles at your other job. Which one? The original original one or the one after the original one? <laughs> I'll tell you later. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um. <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> what uh -oh. have I done? Who have I done? Is more correct to ask. <laughs> Oh, no. I knew he wasn't a sunflower! Oh no! <laughs> Mistakes uh, were made! <laughs> um, but you guys are able to get back to midnight. Um, it's okay. actually still pretty crowded outside. People seem to still be enjoying the festival. Kind of the tents are still open, although um, some of them are a different color. And people seem to be avoiding them. Um, kind of warily. Most people seem to be not really going into the tents, but instead enjoying the performers that are still kind of outside. Um, you actually see Maritza and Maria seem to have kind of pulled up and are trying to make a little bit more money mm -hmm. off, in, off in one side before the end of the day. Um, they don't really notice you. Nobody pays you all too much attention. Um, everyone seems everyone seems like they're still enjoying themselves, but there's this like it's not that raucous kind of loud and 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 crazy enjoyment earlier people moving every which what direction everyone seems to be kind of calm still maybe stunned a little from what they had just experienced previously they're definitely you can notice there's groups of people kind of whispering to each other maybe more calmly just kind of sipping on drinks and just chatting rather than really engaging with the festival itself um, but you're able to go back into midnight which is pretty empty at this moment but you see soren kind of cleaning up behind the counter still mm -hmm. I can pay for the room if you guys need. Well, you know I do. I do know you do. That's very kind of you, Ransom. Stop it. It's the paranoia, not kindness. It's fine. <laughs> I know I know he likes me. He's just not going to say anything. I... <laughs> he just hands Blonde's Delight the gold and says nothing. <laughs> Uh, Ransom, hold on a minute. You were saying earlier about how no one likes you, and right now, Sandor is paying you a compliment. That is a sign that they like you. 
not 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 what I meant. Thank you for your generosity, friend. I am uncomfortable. <laughs> See, this is kindness. This is alien. It's cute, is what it is. Okay. Shall we settle down for the night? Uh, y y what, one sec, I'm just going to have a little conversation with Ransom. <laughs> Ransom, come this way. I do. Okay. Okay. Now, you know why Sando is very mean to you, don't you? Because I don't like him and he doesn't like me. That's, no, 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 quite the opposite. He's mean to you because he likes you very much. He does not like me. Has he... like you can't even flirt! That doesn't matter, I know what things look like. Has he ever pulled your hair? No! Hmm. <laughs> he almost punched me! Oh, that's a good sign. No, it isn't! Ransom, have you considered that Sandor feels comfortable expressing himself physically and angrily around you? <laughs> this... I... He has said multiple times he likes them pretty and stupid, and I am neither. He said he sometimes likes them pretty and stupid. Oh god. Sorry, I just told Vera who she saw. Uh -huh. <laughs> um. You're reading into it too much. No, you're reading into it too little. There is, there people is can, no... People can find you attractive, Ransom. It's okay. Like you said, you don't have to understand why or know how, but sometimes it just happens. I've trapped myself in my own logic and I'm afraid. Please go by the room. Please. I, I actually do need to talk to Sandor about something. Please go by the room. Okay, now remember... It's not what you think. It's not... Please. Good luck. Would you like me to stand 20 no! feet away and give you thumbs no! up or thumbs down? No! <laughs> He's gonna turn and walk back to the group, grab Sandor by the elbow, and walk. Uh, what? Uh, oh, already? Damn. No! <laughs> this is not that. <laughs> Alright, what is like, it? Inch her way. Away, <laughs> they towards long to like. Sandor's letting him drag him along. I know Johan. What? I know Johan. Like. I did not sleep with Johan. I worked with Johan. Haven't you ever wondered why I'm so paranoid? Why I always know everything? What do you? What can you infer that my job was? I don't usually try to infer much about people when I meet them other than will they or won't they sleep with me. So, I have a no spy. idea. I was a spy. Oh. Please, okay. please, Lon's Delight is standing somewhere nearby going... <laughs> Ransom is desperately trying to ignore her. Desperately. <laughs> I apologize in advance for my garbage son. Literally everyone. Uh, <laughs> okay, a spy. And, and? And he's not some innocent little wallflower. Okay. He's dangerous. Everyone I worked with was dangerous. Dangerous like in the murdery kind of way? Or... Usually. Or, or the betrayal kind of way, or the kidnapping kind of way, or the blackmail kind of way. We had a lot of specialties. Well... And that's the second time he sought you out, correct? <laughs> yeah. But... Would, is someone after you? Would someone pay him to seek you out? No. You're sure? Unless it was to murder me.
And I think oh. that's where we'll wrap up today. <laughs> wow. I don't know what We're to say. Just... I'm just going to wiggle happily. We're all just <laughs> <laughs> Scrat, you shit! <laughs> I love you! <laughs> We're all just being hunted. It's cool by, our, by all of our ex-family members and friends. It's fine. We're all just uh... in one big hunting party seriously though we're in serious trouble yeah we're in so much trouble Shimus? when you make a bunch of characters that are running away from things the only thing i can do as a dm is have them chase you <laughs> exactly and i'm delighted i am ecstatic oh, boy i don't like it <laughs> i love it what have we done? The second you said recognize, my heart just went, oh no. Oh uh, no. Uh, <laughs> Where do we recognize from? How bad is this on a scale of bad to catastrophic? And well, I know where that ended up. Somewhere in the middle. <laughs> this is fine. Directly in the middle, actually. This is fine. Well, everyone, <laughs> we're going to head over to the Discord where we'll be talking about today's show. Please check out the links which are now being spammed in chat, including the Discord link for some other things there as well. Big thank you to Mage Hand Press and Burden Storm Publishing, who are our sponsors, and they make this all possible. I'm really looking forward to next week already. That's it for today. We'll be back tomorrow <laughs> at 2 p.m. EST with... um the show that I'm in Nightborn uh, and um, we'll be back here same time next week for more Tilt. Keep on evoking emotions everyone. We'll see you Yay. later on. Bye.